My name is uh, Ibrahim. Uh, I was well raised up uh, in a Christian background, um, both my parents being uh, Catholic. Um, I, um, I would say on my father's side, you know, well on my father's part, he wasn't really uh, that religious. I would say he's more secular. My mother was the same as well, but I did have influences from my grandmother. My grandmother uh, was a very uh, religious woman, always going to uh, church every week and always saying her prayers every day and uh, reading the Bible all the time. She always used to put the fear of God into us. <laughs> Ibrahim is not the only Muslim convert in the UK who appears to have benefited from a religious member of the family. Whether it's an aunt, uncle or grandparent, having someone close to you to remind you about God, about relying on him and to lead a life based on a religious code is a great benefit. In today's world, where God is often forgotten, such religious influences can be life-changing as the person matures into an adult, particularly when those influences are from an early age. This here is St John the Baptist Primary School. I um, used to go here when I was a child. Um, from, from a very young age, this um, school has um, you know, placed, placed the Christian ethos in, into me and um, it um, uh, placed uh, the importance of uh, Christianity and um, in the assemblies they used to talk about uh, the stories of uh, the prophets, especially Jesus. They used to pray together, um, even in classrooms they used to pray together and they always used to, um, you know, do like um, study um, the Bible and stuff and um, we'd always have plays as well um, across the road at um, the church and um, we'd always do the nativity play. In Britain, nativity plays used to play an important role in the religious education and entertainment of young school children. But in recent years, schools have begun to stop this. For Ibrahim, the nativity play is an important memory. As he became older, his education moved to his local church. This is um, St. John the Baptist Church. Um, I, uh, I wasn't a regular, uh, per I didn't attend this place regularly, but um, you know, I, I have been here a few times um, throughout my life. Um, the church in general failed um, to um, address my um, issues I had with, with, with various um, questions while we're in my head. Um, they always used to say, oh, don't ask these questions. You know, you're thinking too much. Read, you know, read the Bible. But, um, you know, a lot of, you know, uh, rulings and a lot of other stuff, whether it's in Christianity, are, are not backed up by the Bible as such. It's more based upon traditions. And, um, you know, uh, that the thing mo that what mostly put you know put me off Christianity was um, the you know innovation you know introducing things in the religion what aren't backed up by the Bible and not following um, uh, what has been said in the Bible you know, for example cleanliness or not eating pork or um, you know things like that even usury for example even you there was an early christian teaching teaching what said you know you cannot you know you know you can't make people pay interest but you know nowadays you know they, they say it's okay one recurring criticism of christians is their gradual neglect of the original teachings of prophet jesus peace be upon him another criticism is that even the early Christians introduced concepts that simply were not true. You know, um, in Christianity there was one thing that never added up to me and that was um, the Holy Trinity, you know, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. I, to me, I, you know, all my life, you know, being raised as a Christian, I felt that, uh, you know, I, I just never understood this concept and, 
you know, it, it didn't make any sense to me whatsoever. And, you know, I always questioned myself, oh, am I a real uh, Christian? For Ibrahim, this certainly was an important question. If he were indeed a Christian, then why was he not practicing? This is a question for many Christians living in Britain. The church has noticed a dramatic decline in followers attending sermons. This has affected children, as they are now no longer accompanying their parents at religious events. But what about Ibrahim? What impression did he really have of his faith? And what was his impression of other faiths, such as Islam? Before embracing, my perception of Islam wasn't a negative perception. As I was brought up in Leicester, as Leicester is quite a multicultural um, city and um, a lot of Muslims live here. F from a young age, I was brought up around Muslim youngsters and I was always told about Islam and in school I was taught about Islam. I think in Leicester, especially like in the schools, they make more of an effort to um, make people more informed about Islam as you know there's a lot of Muslims who live here and um, now I've been brought up a lot of my friends yet yeah, they're Muslim and I've always been told what Islam is about or they believed since an early age I've always known that uh, Muslims believe in the same prophets as the Christians and that um, that they believe you know that they do charity and a lot of good things Unfortunately, on September the 11th, that tainted um, the image of a lot of Muslims. And, um, but it didn't change anything with me on my part, because, you know, <laughs> I was brought up around, you know, the Muslims I was brought up around were very nice, friendly, hardworking, decent, honest people. And, um, you know, I could understand why a lot of people probably think that Muslims are all terrorists because they probably haven't met other Muslims in their life. Well, Ibrahim certainly benefited from growing up around Muslims. But for people who are unfamiliar with Muslims and can only watch as events take place around the world, may be trapped in a state of ignorance. But people can change. Only God knows how, when and where that change will take place. We're um, in Leicester. Um, Allah would, you know, Allah would have made me Muslim wherever I went because that was His will. But all guidance is from Allah. But I feel that um, you know Leicester was an important place to me because you know there's a large like Muslim community here, and um, you know I had a, I met a lot of friends in my life who are Muslim and they gave me dawah and you know they used to talk about Islam to me and. Um, I used to see an Islamic way of life, you know, because not only were I friends and was I friends with Muslims, but I went to their house. I seen what um, life was like in an Islamic, in a Muslim household, and um, I seen, you know, I heard the call to prayer. I seen um, masjids, um, you know, people going in and out of masjids, and you know, people using Islamic phrases such as Insha Allah or uh, Masha Allah, and um, you know, just just things like that. Really, you know, it's. Um, it gave me, um, you know, it, it, it kind of helped me to, um, you know, get an a really, really, really basic understanding of Islam. Being at least familiar with Islam was an important feature in Ibrahim's journey, particularly as a teenager. Of course, Ibrahim was now looking for a much deeper understanding, and his understanding would start with God. Tawheed was um, the number one factor of me um, having an interest in um, Islam, you know, believing that God is one and he doesn't have a creator and he doesn't have any family, he doesn't have a daughter, a son, a mother or a father and there's nobody like him and that all power is with him and um, that, you know, the whole concept of, um, of the Holy Trinity got um, answered by Islam that basically saying that this is all redundant there's nobody like him he's created the universe, the stars, the earth, the planets, everything this is all by him and this is by, by him just saying be and, it, and it's be 
For Ibrahim, the emphasis of Islam on reminding people about the essence of God, without the imperfections of other religions, was really what made him realise that Islam had something special to offer. I embraced Islam at the age of 17, so this a couple of, in a couple of months' time it will be eight years. Um, I embraced, uh, after doing many years of research, um, you know, I started questioning um, basic, um, you know, fundamentals in the Christ well, modern-day Christianity, you know, for example, like the, um, the uh, Holy Trinity, um, you know, like the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, it never made sense to me, you know. I always used to pray to God directly because I never believed that Jesus was a God. I just, you know, I, it just sounded too strange, you know, and, um, you know, it was the greatest decision in my, in my life. You know, it took me two years of researching. I researched many religions and stuff. I focused on um, the Abrahamic um, faiths, um, such as Judaism and other sects in Christianity and Islam. And, um, you know, I, uh, you know, there was one day I came to a realization that, uh, yes, uh, Christian, I mean, Islam is the truth. And, um, you know, but I was too scared to act upon it because I thought, you know, it was uh, uh, satanic whispers, as some may call it. And, um, you know, uh, I also used to have uh, debates with many of my friends as well about Christianity and Islam. We used to always talk all night. And, you know, I think, you know, one of my friends, you know, he planted a, um, uh, he, he softened my heart and, you know, planted a seed in there, um, you know, of, you know, of Iman and, um, you know, that there was one day, um, you know, I was in my bedroom alone and I was thinking, what if I was to die today, um, you know, and I didn't take my Shahada, you know, I just, you know, that, just that second, I was just like, you know what, I have to embrace. So, you know, I, I, you know, I took my Shahada by myself and, um, you know, I completely, you know, it was the most beautiful feeling in my, in, you know, in my life. And I felt like uh, a weight was lifted off my um, chest, you know. I felt so, like, tranquil and peaceful and, you know, it was, I, I can't really explain it, you know, it was so beautiful, it was a wonderful feeling. Um, obviously, later on, I did go to a masjid um, to, uh, you know, have my, uh, you know, it, to, to say my shahada in front of witnesses and, um, you know, Ever, you know, I, ever since then, you know, I haven't looked back. It's been the greatest decision in my life. Yes, it has been like a roller coaster. You do get your ups and downs, but um, you know, the, the most important thing is to have you know a good intention and to keep going. And if you have a mistake, to lift yourself back up. I mean, if you make a mistake, to lift yourself back up again. And uh, you know, if you do encounter any adversities, to you know, break right through them. <laughs> Ibrahim had now joined Islam, a community of well over a billion people. He was drawn to its central figure, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. One of the things that attracted me to the Prophet وسلم, was his justice and his kindness and how fair he was. And um, one hadith, what really, um, you know, won me over was the hadith when there was that Jewish woman who always used to throw rubbish at him and um, you know on a daily basis and um, there was one day where she didn't throw rubbish at him she was an older, elderly lady and um, he, he was uh, so concerned about her and uh, he went to her to see how she was doing and you know to see if she was okay and um, you know that just shows you know what kind of man he was and the, also the other had time when he was in Taif and the angels said to him, oh, you know, we can close the mountain on, you know, these people. And he said, no, because who knows, later on, their generations will be pious Muslims, inshallah, the later generations. Ibrahim was truly inspired. There was no turning back now. Studying Islam became an enjoyment for him. He was now reading the Holy Quran frequently as do Muslims around the world on a daily basis. Unlocking the Quran's mysteries and understanding its numerous principles is a pastime as well as an obligation. From the stories of previous prophets to important values and ethics, 
the Quran provides Muslims with continuous interest and reflection. The most uh, deepest verse uh, for me in the Quran is, uh, you know, I, I, I'll say the ikhlas, that's, that's very deep, you know, how kulhu la ahad, Allah samad, lam yalid wa lam yulad, wa lam yakul lahu kufun ahad. You know, basically how it talks about the oneness of Allah, that Allah is one and that he hasn't been begotten and he hasn't begot and he's not, he doesn't have a son and um, he's, he doesn't have a father or a creator, he's free from all of these. And um, my other one I would say is um, Ali Imran, how it says, Kullu nafs in what it basically says that every soul shall taste death. And you know, <laughs> that's one <laughs> truth which, you know, is terrifying. And when was the last time we all thought about death? It certainly isn't what we necessarily like to think about. But should we not be alert to its truth and also to what follows? Islam reminds us of the temporary nature of this life, which isn't easy. How useful would it be, therefore, to have friends to help us on this journey? You get friends in all walks of life, um, but I would say, you know, as being a Muslim and um, following the religion of Islam, it is important to have Islamic friends because they say you do follow the religion of your friends. You can share knowledge with each other, you can go to the masjid together, you have the same interests, you know. Maybe, you know, your friends, you know, maybe they, you know, they'll be in the same thing as you. They won't want to go clubbing, they won't want to drink alcohol, and, um, you know, they want to go they want to read Quran with you, they want to go to the masjid with you, they want to pray. You know, you can have sahur together, you can have iftar together. And um, just they'll all, you'll always be in like an Islamic environment. One of the themes amongst Muslim converts is the feeling of comfort they enjoy of having similar minded friends. Far from feeling the loneliness that some people may ascribe to new changes in lifestyle, Muslim converts often feel that their social life is maintained by new friends and new communities who all share similar perspectives on life. This can be extremely satisfying and more importantly, can provide converts with opportunities that they previously never had. Being part of a strong community has transformed Ibrahim's life. Since um, embracing, um, you know, there's been many improvements in my life. For a start off, I feel complete. I have this tranquil feeling, you know. Before, um, you know, when I was Christian, I always used to have doubts and I used to always question myself and, you know, think, am I following the right path? And um, Islam has answered all them questions completely. Um, secondly, I would, you know, say it's, it's kept me from staying away from, um, you know, bad company and to um, you know, re-evaluate re my um, position in life and to um, prioritise you know, what you know, what's the most important um, things in my life such as my family and you know, it's also my third point would be you know, with my mother. You know, it's, it, I've always been respectful to my mother, I've always you know, had that love but it's always taught me to go that extra mile for my mother and to, to be kind to my mother and to um, you know, give her dower and stuff. Ibrahim has highlighted the importance of respecting our parents. In Islam, this respect for one's parents is quite extraordinary. For example, Muslims are commanded to not raise their voices at their parents. Many in Britain could benefit from learning these values. But these are more than values. These are actual practices. Ibrahim tells us what other Islamic practices he enjoys. I'd enjoy every Islamic um, practice, you know, the five um, pillars, you know, pray, you know, first one's shahada and, you know, praying and giving charity, you know, and helping, helping others out, whether they're Muslim or non-Muslim and, you know, just bettering myself as a human being. You know, tahajjud, you know, just praying, at, you know, early in the morning, asking Allah for anything. You know, for forgiveness, for um, even if it's to pass an exam or, you know, anything you want in this world or the hereafter, you know, that's the best time to pray to Hajjud and you feel, you know, like, you know, Allah is listening to you. In Britain, prayer is often misunderstood to be a last resort, even for Islam. 
This is viewed as a major misconception. Prayer is a key to the life of this world and the hereafter, nothing less. And it is this prayer that causes so many people to think about converting. Ibrahim tells us his advice to people who are considering joining the world's fastest growing religion. My advice to um, people who are um, considering converting to Islam is that um, you know, don't, before make, passing any judgments, look at the sources, look at the Quran, look at you know, hadiths and make a judgment for yourself. Don't listen to what people will say or what it is being said in the news because you know, a lot of it is biased and um, that's the way, that's how I found the truth, was by just opening my eyes and looking at the actual facts rather than assumptions or um, accusations of what um, Muslims do. It can be very challenging to adopt a new view on life. But for Ibrahim, this has been precisely the definition of his journey. He has changed his perspective of his life and the universe around him. And for him, this has meant everything. Islam means to me the surrender to Allah, surrendering to Allah and praying and doing the five pillars and, you know, rejecting all this, you know, all these distortions that have been made in the previous religions and following the true way, the way of the Prophet ﷺ by worshipping Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala.